uh, let's talk about graphene oxide. In my first video, I thoroughly talk about graphene and its structure, its applications. In today's video, let's talk about graphene oxide. As we know that carbon has these five allotropes and we get graphene from graphite. In simple words, if we have a graphite 3D block and if we just take the first layer, if we just remove this first layer and that layer is very very thin, uh, for instance, this layer is just made from a single carbon atom. Uh, those carbon atoms are arranged uh, in hexagon shapes and each carbon atom are attached with another carbon atom through covalent bond, right? Now, the question arises that why we need graphene oxide, not graphene? So in this video, I'm going to explain this, right? Let's first see the basics. What basically we do? We have a graphite three-dimensional structure. We oxidize this graphite. Oxidize mean we chemically combine oxygen with graphite. So we get graphite oxide, right? Once we get graphite oxide, now, now it is easy to get graphene oxide. The same which, which we just explained here that from graphite three-dimensional structure, we just remove the top layer, we will get graphene two-dimensional sheet. Similarly, once we get here graphite oxide, then we get graphene oxide, right? Now the question is, oxygen enter to the graphene lattices and we know that it is insulator, it is not a conductor and we use graphene oxide in so many applications later I will explain that it is insulator not a conductor and we need a conductor then we can also convert this into reduced graphene oxide this means that in graphene oxide we have oxygen contents in large number and reduced graphene oxide mean that we reduce the content of oxygen and it become a conductor so it become a pure graphene just like we get uh, through other approaches now the question is why don't we directly get graphene instead of this lengthy process so graphene is expensive as well as it require very tedious process right before this let's go to uh, google uh, scopus and see uh, what is the importance of uh, graphene oxide? This is a scopus here. And if I use the keyword only graphene oxide and search it, you will see that how grooving this field is. Now the scopus is uh, searching for me. Now look here, this number of documents have been published so far, almost 80,000 documents. And if you look uh, at that, in which field it is publishing people look here so the field is growing here uh, if you look into from 2013 and 2020 so the field is growing uh, with a high speed and if you look here uh, uh, what what are the fields uh, this graphene is targeting here <laughs> so you will see here let's view more here uh, it targeting material science chemistry you see here engineering, chemical engineering, precision astronomy, energy, environmental, medicines, pharmaceuticals. You see, if you if we view all, so there are so many uh, areas uh, which uh, 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 targeted by a graphene here. You see here, so many areas. So this was a little bit about the, the application of graphene oxide, that where we use graphene oxide, right? Now let's move into detail. Uh, let's, we know about the graphene, then why we need graphene oxide if we have graphene. Look here, uh, graphene is basically a two-dimensional material uh, made of carbon atom. We know this, attached by a covalent bond with each other in a repeating hexagonal uh, pattern. This we know hexagonal pattern, right? 
And graphene has a lot of applications in every walk of, li walk of life. For instance, in medicine, which we saw now in Scopus, electronics, energy conversion devices, energy storage, aviation, filtration in so But why? But what is the problem basically? Look here. This is basically a graphene oxide structure now. When we attach a functional group to the graphene, this means that this graphene, uh, this now structure is the graphene oxide because we oxidize. Mean simply oxidize mean we chemically react graphene with oxygen, right? Look the problem here. Is graphene cost is very high and difficult to produce, as I mentioned before. Therefore, much attention is given to its derivatives, mean its other forms where graphene is present. And graphene oxide is one of them. It is also one atom thick layer material obtained from graphite oxide, as I explained. Basically, graphene oxide is an oxidized form of graphene. If you can get graphene through any means, so you can also convert it into, it into graphene oxide <laughs> because here I mentioned graphene oxide is basically a precursor for graphene. This means that from graphene oxide we can get graphene. If you have a graphene in your hand and you uh, combine with oxygen it will become uh, graphene oxide as well, right? Graphene oxide is basically also a monolayer of two dimensional pattern. Uh, with a high oxygen content and uh, literature review shows that the content of carbon and oxygen is almost 2 ratio 1, right? This means that uh, two atom of carbon and there will be one atom, uh, one molecule of one atom, one atom of oxygen, right? The benefits of graphene oxide is basically it is dispersible in water because we need solution process for all kind of uh, 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 substrate making in this kind, so it is dis dispersible in water. So in other sol other solvent as well, because if you are using DMF, if you are using ethanols, etc., uh, it and it is used to form graphene in the form disographene oxide. As I mentioned, that graphene oxide is basically insulator. It is not a conductor, and most of the electrodes we need conducting uh, substrate, conducting um, uh, substrate in uh, film. So then we uh, further uh, reduce this graphene oxide into uh, reduced graphene oxide using some CVD and some chemical thermal lithography techniques, right? Now let's go to see the uses of graphene oxide. As I, as I mentioned earlier that graphene oxide film can be deposited on any kind of substrate and later become a conductor. This does not mean that we will grab, leave the graphene oxide like there is insulator because if then if we leave it as a graphene oxide then it's not going to work. This means that we will convert it into conductor. Right? As I explained, we will convert into RGOs, right? We use graphene oxide as a transparent conductive film for flexible electronics. You see here, why we use for flexible electronics? Because we explained in the first video that graphene structure is uh, flexible that is very thin so it can be a, it can show flexibility we can also explain in solar cells and chemical sensors right it is a substitute of tin oxide uh, you know tin oxide is basically uh, let me take this pointer uh, highlighter uh, basically uh, tin oxide we use basically a, uh, in FTO fluorine uh, dope tin oxide and indium uh, dope tin oxide. These are the uh, transparent conducting electrodes, these two, right? And you just do Google uh, and search it, these are very, very expensive. These FTOs and ITOs. These are glasses and also some plastics. So these are uh, uh, very, very conductive. Uh, we, people, we, de we deposit this uh, glass uh, uh, on this, uh, using this layer and this layer. And we can also deposit this on plastic right so this this graphene oxide can be a substitute for tin oxide and batteries and touch screen etc right and as we know that graphene is a two dimensional a material so it has very high specific surface area specific surface area means that as i explained in my previous videos that specific uh, 
surface area. Specific mean that uh, if we take um, one gram of something in how much square area it will cover, that is called specific area, and it, its unit is basically a gram per meter square. Right? So if it has a high surface area, so we can use it electrode material for batteries because we need more reaction sites, right? And capacitor in solar cells, right? And the last one is we can use graphene oxide to make composite with materials whose properties are not strong and, 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 and the material is not that strength. So we make composite mean we make blend of graphene oxide with some other uh, material. Uh, we want to improve the strength and the elasticity as well as the conductivity because we know that graphene band gap is zero. It's a good conductor, right? So this was, this was all about the uses of graphene oxide and why we need graphene oxide and uh, what are the procedures to achieve graphene oxide and graphene oxide is an insulator so how then we convert it into reduced graphene oxide.